All right, this video is going to be on pH and solubility. Now, in the previous section, we learned that introducing a common ion into a soluble salt will decrease the solubility of that salt. Right? The presence of a common ion decreases the solubility. This works the same for acids and bases. In general, insoluble bases or, or partially soluble bases dissolve better in acidic solutions. Acid reacts with the base. Insoluble acids dissolve better in basic solutions. So let's look at an example and see how that works. Let's take an insoluble base or a partially soluble base, magnesium hydroxide. Right? Its equilibrium expression can be written as the concentration of magnesium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide raised to the second power. Right? That second power comes from the stoichiometric coefficient of 2 in this equation. Now, what the solubility product represents, okay, it represents the point at which you have a saturated solution and you have the maximum concentration of both of these species in solution before you surpass your solubility product and before a precipitate would have to form. So that's the, the, the solubility product is, is representative of a saturated solution. With that said, we can use an ice table to figure out that value of S. Right, that concentration that we get from that value of S. And therefore, we can use that to figure out the concentration of hydroxide in a saturated solution. So this is the concentration of hydroxide in a saturated solution. Right. Now we turn that concentration into a pOH and then a pH. So the pH of a saturated solution of this, according to its cellular product, is going to be 10.45. So how would the solubility of you know, this magnesium hydroxide change at pHs above and below 10.5? Right, so if you have a pH below less than 10.5, that's an acidic solution. Now that ac you know, acidic solution is going to react and in essence take away some of this hydroxide. It's going to shift the equilibrium therefore to the right, and more of this insoluble base is going to dissolve. So it lowers the hydroxide concentration because it reacts with it. This out the, the acid reacts with the hydroxide, as we've seen before. And you shift the equilibrium to the right and you increase the solubility. But at a pH greater than 10.45, at a pH greater than 10.5, okay, if you have a larger pH, you have a larger concentration of hydroxide. So if you're putting this in a solution with a greater pH, you're in, you know, in essence, just increasing the concentration of this species. By increasing the concentration of this species in equilibrium, the equilibrium is going to shift more so to the left, and it's going to have less a decrease in solubility. So now let's work through example 16.13, right? And the question posed is, which of the following compounds will be more soluble in acidic solution than in water, right? So let's look at this first example, copper 2 sulfide. So what this is saying here is the cation, typically cations are what salts typically cause acidic solutions, it's not going to interact with the H plus ion. They both bear positive charges. But the anion might react. Right? The anion is going to act as a proton acceptor or act as a base only if it's the conjugate base of a weak acid. Remember, conjugates of weak acids have appreciable strength, whereas conjugates of strong acids do not. Solubility equilibrium for copper sulfide is as written. The sulfide ion, this S, this anion, is the conjugate base of the weak acid. Right? It's the conjugate base of this weak acid.
So it reacts with H plus in solution to form this. So that reaction removes S2 plus ion. So if I put this anion in acidic solution, it's going to react with the H plus to form this acid. And you're effectively removing those ions. According to the old shot layer principle, the equilibrium is going to have to shift to the right to replace some of those ions. Now, if it shifts to the right, it's going to cause copper 2 sulfide to be more soluble in an acidic solution. So therefore, that will be more soluble in the acidic solution. Now let's work through the solubility equilibrium for silver 1 chloride. Now let's look at the chloride anion in this. The chloride anion is the conjugate base of a strong acid, so it has no appreciable strength. So the acid solution is not going to react or be in any way neutralized by the chloride anion. Therefore, the solubility of silver chloride is no greater in an acidic solution than it would be in a neutral solution. Now let's look at the soluble, solubility expression for lead to sulfate. Right? The sulfate ion, it's a weak base because it's the conjugate of the weak acid, HSO4 minus. All right? Now this, would, this is kind of tricky because you'd think, oh, the sulfate is from sulfuric acid, but sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Okay? HSO4 minus is a weak acid. So that sulfate could be the conjugate of the weak acid. Therefore, those ions will react with H plus in the acidic solution to reform its conjugate. And the reaction removes that SO4 2 minus from solution. Now, according to that, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right and increase solubility in that to compensate. So it's going to move to the right, increase solubility of that to compensate. Therefore, lead to sulfate is more soluble in acidic solution than in a neutral solution. The final example of this section of the chapter is calculating the concentrations of aqueous ammonia necessary to initiate the precipitation of iron to hydroxide from a 0 0.003 molar solution of iron to chloride. So the strategy for this problem is as such. Now, for the iron hydroxide to precipitate from the solution, the value of the ion product, or the concentration of the cation times the concentration of the anion raised to the power of 2, must be greater than the KSP. Right? If that value is greater than KSP, where extra ions dissolve in solution, then the solution can handle, and the solution will respond by decreasing um, the solubility of those and forming a precipitate. So first things first, we have to calculate the concentration of hydroxide of the known concentration of Fe2+. Now, it's a known concentration of Fe2+, because we know the molarity of the iron 2 chloride solution that we threw in there. We do that because we have this concentration, we have a KSP value. We can find the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium. Right? So that we can find the concentration of that saturated hydroxide. And then from that, right, we need to calculate the concentration of ammonia that will supply that concentration. So we need to figure out the concentration of ammonia that will supply enough hydroxide ions to be a saturated solution. So any concentration of ammonia greater than that value will cause a precipitate to be formed, and it'll have a supersaturated solution. So ammonia reacts with water to produce hydroxide ions, which react with iron 2 plus to form iron hydroxide. So the source of the hydroxides in this case is from the weak 
base ammonia reacting with water. Right. So we want to find the hydroxide concentration above which that iron hydroxide will begin to precipitate. Okay. So this is the solubility product of iron hydroxide. That's the expression. And that's the value of that solubility product. So we know the concentration of iron in solution because iron 2 chloride is a strong electrolyte. Right? From the solubility product, which is 1.6 times 10 to the 14, and that concentration, we can plug those into the solubility product expression to solve for the concentration of hydroxide in a saturated solution. Okay? That's the concentration of hydroxide in a saturated solution. Any concentration of hydroxide above that, there will be a precipitate that is formed. Anything below that value, you'll have an unsaturated solution capable of dissolving more of the ionic compound. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate the concentration of ammonia that will supply that molarity of hydroxide ion. So we're going to let X be the initial concentration of ammonia that we're looking for. Now we need to dissolve this many hydroxide ions, or sorry, we need to produce and associate, produce this many moles, or this concentration of hydroxide ions, and thus this concentration of ammonium ions. And you're going to need to decrease that value of X by this concentration change. And now if we substitute the equilibrium concentrations that are listed right here into the equilibrium expression with the ionization constant, plug all these values back into this expression and solve for x, we can find the concentration of ammonia that's going to be required to produce a saturated solution. So any solution of ammonia that is higher in concentration than, than 2.6 times 10 to the negative 6 molar, a precipitate will form. Right? Any concentration of ammonia higher than that will cause a precipitate to form. 